Pergo Otero here with the Prometheus Initiative. Uh, at the moment, I'm sitting on Tango's floor because that's where I've been working on this lovely guy. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my god. Anyways, this is my hot glue toroid with the five quartz crystals in the center of it. I'm extremely proud of how this came out. Um, and even more intrigued by it in itself because. I was meditating on it and holding it between my hands and it definitely emanates an energy just because the geometry itself, it does have five quartz crystals in it. Which quartz crystals do emanate um, energy themselves and being an energy worker I'm sensitive to this sort of thing. Um, but it's not like quartz crystal, it's, um, it's much more soothing. It makes me think of a, a dorje, which is this Buddhist uh, piece of geometry and it's almost like, think of like a donut with another donut intersecting it like this going around and then another on the other side and so I think they're actually it might, there's four fans or eight fans some might have eight, some might have four and then there's two on each end connected by a center piece the first time I came in contact with one of these it was made out of brass and when I picked it up I was absolutely shocked in terms of the energy it was emitting it was the first thing I ever picked up besides really a, a crystal that I could feel the energy I was like, the geometry alone is emanating this energy. And from this point on, most objects you can pick up, or I've been able to pick up, and they do emanate some sort of energy, but the geometry alone drastically begins to emanate some energy. Just like, uh, this guy right here, a little pyramid I made. <laughs> uh, to the proportions of the five pyramid, and this is made of... Um, Plaster of Paris, which is 85% calcium sulfate, uh, hemihydrate, and up, up to 15% calcium carbonate, which is what's found in limestone, which pyramids are usually made of, and then a little bit like less than 8% of silica. But it's a great thing to work with, and this too will emanate energy, just the geometry alone. So, uh, yeah, I got this guy. I've been just trying to smooth it out. Um, get nice and smooth and hopefully the next step is I'm going to start winding it and we'll have a cool little run coil capacitor going. Thank you. So one thing I wanted to add about this, um, I don't think I mentioned this in my last video but the reason I'm using hot glue is it's a hydrocarbon which I also said is diamagnetic. The thing is it's less dense than water and this is what's going to make this easy to test this concept to see if it works. So right here, we got a little jug of water, okay, and there are five quartz crystals in it, which would sink in water, but there's enough hot glue that I stick this guy in, and ooh, it's floating, my toroid is floating, so mission success, which is cool, um, hopefully we use aluminum wire on it, it might weigh it down a little bit, but as long as it has some buoyancy, well, the whole thing is going to be lighter as is. Technically, you want it to be the exact same density as water, so it just sort of floats in the water. And technically, if you get things start spinning, there will be an anti-gravitic effect. Probably very, very small, but an anti-gravitic effect nonetheless. So it should just sort of rotate on itself without like sinking down, being held down by gravity, or floating to the surface. And uh, yeah, so there's that crazy concept. Um, the nice thing about using aluminum wire or copper wire is aluminum is over half the weight less than copper, which is a big thing. So um, it's only its atomic weight is 27, while copper is something like around 60, 62, something like that. So big difference. Awesome.